Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Royal Limited by Buttonshy Games and designed by Scott Alms. This is a single player game that takes roughly 10 minutes to play and is for ages 10 and up. In the game The Royal Limited, you are creating a train. A train is gonna have cars, it's gonna have passengers, and it's gonna have VIPs. You'll have four rounds of gameplay. We'll be drawing cards, playing them down to create a larger train, placing passengers in those trains, and then securing VIPs. The aim of the game Game is to have the least amount of cards left in your hand, in the deck, and VIP passengers available by putting them together to form the train. In four rounds, based on how many cards you have left, that will score you points. The more points you have left, the least points your the least your score is going to be. So if you can get rid of all the cards, you'll win the game. Let's show you how to set the game up, how to play, and of course my review. To set up the game, the Royal Limited, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take the train departed card and place it face up with the green side facing the top portion on the table. Then you're going to take the deck of train cards slash passengers. You'll shuffle those cards up, you'll place them down on the right hand side of the train departed card, leaving room for a discard pile. Separate an area just below where you place these cards to form your train area, and then take two random VIP characters and place them just below that. These cards are both front and back, so you can orientate them either way and make sure that they're just random two cards placed down there. You can discard the rest of the VIP cards, you won't need them. Then from the train deck, you're gonna go ahead and draw five cards to begin your turn and start the game off. Once you've got your train departed card, your two VIP passengers and the rest of your deck with five cards in hand, you're ready to start playing the Royal Limited. Playing the game the Royal Limited is actually quite simple. There are three actions that you can take, and you can take those actions for as long as you have cards in hand or you choose to. Once you no longer have cards left in your hand or you choose to stop, you'll rotate the round card. Once you do that, you'll draw five new cards from the deck here and you'll rinse and repeat up until the fourth round. If the fourth round is over or completed, you'll end the game and you'll score. If you ever run out of cards in your deck, you will shuffle the discard pile and put those cards back in to form a deck. On your turn, there are three actions you can take, and the first action you can take is placing a train. When you place a train, make sure you put it in between the area of your VIP passengers and your train departed section, and place it horizontally. The number on the train will represent a color and a number, and that number is going to influence how many cards you must discard from your hand in order for you to place the train out. If you would like to place another train at any point on any of the rounds in any of your turns, you'll simply have to place another adjacent to that train. And there's two things it must meet as far as conditions. It may not be the same color and it may not be the same number. So if I have a zero that is pink, I can place a yellow that is three adjacent to it. Of course, the zero would represent having to discard zero cards, and the three would represent me having to discard three cards from my hand. And that would be basically how you place trains down, and you can place as many as you possibly can each round. The next action you can take is to place a passenger. Passengers must go in the same train that either has the same number or the same color. So if I have a zero pink, I can play a one pink, a two pink, or a three pink inside that train. I may also place a zero of any color inside that train. And the same is said for all the rest of the colors and numbers of trains. When you place a passenger in a train, you must do the train's ability to the best of your ability. Sometimes a train car might say next. That will be the next action you must perform when placing a passenger in. So for example, if I place my one inside of a zero, it says place a passenger in a car such that the two cars have a total of three value. I must do that as my next action because the keyword says next. Other trains might say something like reveal the top three cards of the deck and add one of those colors, uh, cards to your hand based on the color or something else. And you'll just check the train to see what action you have to take based on when you place a passenger there. Your last action is you can place a VIP down. Now VIPs share similar rules as far as passengers go with either a color or a number, um, but they also will have something unique to them. Maybe the train must have an odd amount of cars and you have to be able to place that VIP in the middle of those cars. Uh, perhaps it's a wild and it doesn't care what color you're playing it in. Or it has to be placed between two even valued passengers. Or you have to place two between two passengers with total value of three, and so on and so forth. And so that's basically the game. You'll be basically playing your trains, putting in passengers, and putting in VIPs. Whenever you no longer have cards left to play, you're going to move the train departed card and rotate it one uh, 90 degrees and draw five new cards from the deck, 
always making sure to shuffle the discard pile into the deck if you run out of cards. And once the fourth round, or if you ever run out of cards completely, including VIPs, the game will end. And you'll check your score. For each VIP you have that you didn't place in, you will score a point. For each card in your hand, or each card in your deck, you will score a point. And you will just simply check in the rulebook here to determine your rank. A score of zero means you're a royal conductor, good job. Two is your beginning conductor, and four or more means you lose the game. And that's how you play the game, the Royal Limited by Scott Elms. Let's go ahead and talk about it now. Okay, so the Royal Limited. Well, this is a solid game. It's tight and you have to make really hard choices. The different trains will allow for unique actions that you, as you play them down and place passengers in them, you can kind of manipulate the deck. The unique VIPs that are both front and back will give you unique things that you have to accomplish in the game, which will change the way your train has function, is functioning throughout it. And of course, your objective is to get to zero. Now what I can say is you can begin to master this game and after you do so you're probably going to want to start to give yourself a little bit of a challenge as to how quickly can you do it, uh, what's the best possible combinations, etc, etc. This is one of those games where after you've kind of gone into it and played it a good chunk of times, you'll kind of have it set and understand it pretty well. Now there is some room for variability as far as chance goes and things that can potentially happen in the game that can make it more restricting for you. But if you can get a solid god hand and you know how to play the game pretty well, you can almost guarantee yourself after you've learned it to master the game with either one or even zero cards in your hand. This has beautiful artwork. I feel like I am making a train. I feel like I'm connecting them. I feel like I'm placing ticketed passengers in them. I feel like the different VIPs provide a unique train experience each and every time, requiring a unique setup of combination of cards in them. Uh, the fact that you're gonna be drawing all these cards, discarding them and reshuffling and putting them out into your hand and kind of getting rid of everything is, it feels good. It feels good to get rid of everything as opposed to like, oh, if you score between zero and three points, you win the game. No, it's you have to score that zero to be the best. And and otherwise you'll lose at four points. Um, the fact that you can master this game, the fact that it has a lot of replayability as well as the different variations of cards and the different VIPs that change the train around is solid. Now, this game is probably not gonna stay the test of time for a lot of you, and once you've kind of mastered it, you'll probably want to move on, but for an 18 card card game, that's a solid experience for a good price. A Scott Elms game and a Button Shy game all rolled into one with a really tight, neat play style is a solid pickup. Not my favorite game from Button Shy, but definitely one of the top ones, and I definitely do recommend it. If you like solo player games and 18 card card games that play in a small space with lots of replayability, then this, the Royal Limited, is definitely for you. For those of you who kind of want more than a single player experience that don't enjoy really tight uh, games that involve trying to empty everything out, um, seeing how you can make little mistakes here that can cost you the game can be kind of frustrating, and the fact that sometimes you'll get these different VIPs and card combinations that just might not be in your favor and that just can happen, then this is probably one that you might want to stay away from. Overall for me though, this will stay in my Button Shy Games collection and I'll bring it out. And if I ever get bored with it, I'll pass it on to somebody else who will greatly enjoy it for a while until they pass it on to somebody else as well. Anyway, if you're interested, there's a link down below. I believe it's for pre-order, but I think you'll be able to pick it up at some point. Maybe if you're watching this in the future, you'll be able to pick it up right now. All right, well, there you go. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Royal Limited by Scott Elms and Button Shy Games. If you're interested in picking this up, you know where to go. You can also, if you think we've earned it, if you watch more than one of our videos, I know that you have. You lazy guys, because I watch YouTube too, and I don't, I don't subscribe all the time with people when I watch more than one of their videos. But I figure if I berate you enough, just like some of those guys might, then that might get you to do it. Because that's what's gotten me to do it before. So push the subscribe button if we've earned it and you've watched more than one of our videos, get up, push the button, or if you're on your phone, click it. I greatly appreciate it. it keeps us wanting to do more videos to show you smaller games, to show you more Kickstarter, like indie style games. All right, guys, I've berated you enough. There's a live stream on 6.30 on Wednesdays and whatnot, and at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, where we play games just like this one. You can watch them play to see if it's something for you that might even help you more than just our review. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to playing another 18 card card game with you, or well, by myself, next time. <laughs>